So for the last uh, 30 years, uh, the standard of care, first line treatment of hairy cell leukemia has been uh, single agent purine analog, mostly cladribine. And we know that this can achieve complete remissions in, in 75 to 90 percent of patients. Uh, now, there is minimal residual disease uh, that, it, that consists of traces of hairy cells that we can see uh, by special techniques uh, like immunohistochemistry and flow cytometry in patients uh, who get treated with cladribine alone. And uh, this, we believe, leads to relapse in patients uh, so that uh, they relapse within 5 to 16 years depending on the type of follow-up that patients have. We uh, incorporated rituximab into this protocol, and we know that rituximab is an anti-CD20 antibody that can kill cells uh, like hairy cells uh, through non-chemotherapy mechanisms. And we know that when you combine rituximab with cladribine, you can eliminate minimal residual disease in at least some patients. Uh, but we, and we know that in order to get synergy between the cladribine and the rituximab, the rituximab makes the cells more sensitive to the cladribine. So you have to have the cladribine and the rituximab there at the same time. And uh, so we don't know, though, how effective cladribine and rituximab concurrently um, is in removing MRD. And we also don't even know to what extent the cladribine alone can eliminate minimal residual disease. So these are the questions that we that we asked in this protocol. And as far as the results, what we found uh, was that at the six month time point, and at the six month time point, this is before any of the delayed uh, rituximab could be given, it's a way that we could compare cladribine with concurrent rituximab versus cladribine alone. And what we found that is that cladribine with concurrent rituximab achieved 97% MRD-free complete remission versus only 24% after cladribine alone. Moreover, we found that in following these patients after a median of seven and a half years so far, that still 94% of the patients who got concurrent rituximab and cladribine are still in MRD-free complete remission compared to only 12% in the patients uh, getting the cladribine alone. So that shows that the cladribine alone has much less uh, complete MRD-free complete remission than cladribine plus rituximab and plus they're not as durable complete remissions. Now, what about uh, delayed rituximab? So with the delayed rituximab, we've so far treated 21 uh, patients with delayed rituximab. And the question is, can we get close to that 97% MRD-free um, that we achieved after concurrent cladribine and rituximab? But we found that with delayed rituximab in 21 patients, we so far only have 62% of patients that were MRD-free complete remissions. Uh, and moreover, uh, several of those patients have uh, relapsed uh, to being positive for MRD. And so, not only is the percentage of patients that we can get in, into MRD-free complete remission less, but the durability of those complete remissions is not quite as high. So we believe that if patients can stay long-term in MRD-free complete remission, uh, that those patients may never need more treatment, at least more chemotherapy for hairy cell leukemia, uh, and it could lead to cure of hairy cell leukemia. But in order to determine if that's the case, uh, we will need to follow patients for many more years because this is a disease that uh, can take a long time to come back. But we believe with further follow-up, uh, we'll be able to determine if we can, number one, of, uh, keep patients from needing more treatment, and number two, if we can cure this disease with this, with this upfront approach.